Hey guys, welcome. Linux Mint 21.3 Cinnamon Edge version. I'm going to be talking about a little bit about the differences between the standard version and the Edge version. The Edge version was just released in the last week. So I am filming in 1920 by 1080. You can adjust your YouTube player accordingly. Now Linux is for any age, but the name of my channel is Linux for Seniors. This is just a watermark. What you should see above the time and date or near there is a, another logo similar to that with uh, some color around it to click on if you like to subscribe. If you don't see that, go find me on YouTube. So let's go take a peek at Linux Mint's website. And um, we are going to talk about the standard version and also the Edge version. Now, if you want the standard version, you can just follow the download section and then click that. I will talk about the release announcement as far as minimum and recommended. So recommended for random access memory is four gigabytes for comfortable usage. So anything above four gigabytes is probably real comfortable. 100 gigabytes of disk space is recommended and something better than 1024 by 768 for screen res. Now let's talk about the Edge version. How do you find that? Well, you're going to go onto uh, Linux Mint's website. I thought I'd back this out. I guess I didn't. Sorry. Too far back. All right. So you're in here on their main page. Walk over to download to all versions and there's the Edge. So what is the difference between the standard version and the Edge version? The standard version ships with a 5.1.5 series Linux kernel. The Edge version ships with a 6.5 series kernel. The reason for that is because it accommodates for the newer hardware that you could have, motherboards and other components. So this is made for newer computers, in other words. Okay, you click that and the image is roughly three gigabytes You'll download that, burn that onto a DVD or a USB stick. The mirrors are all down here below it. Pick one that's closest to you. Let me talk about your experience after you burn that onto that uh, USB stick or DVD. The, um, you'll boot up uh, using that live media. The auto detect may take a while. It could be a couple of minutes with a black screen. Once it boots up with the Linux Mint logo, you're halfway there. And then you can start the installation process. I would recommend that you first sign on to your network so you can uh, have your multimedia updates at the same time it's installing. And then once you start the installation procedure, again, you're going to be um, using a 6.5 series Linux kernel, and that process is roughly 8 to 10 minutes. All right, so um, I would also, after the full install, I would actually recommend that you shut the machine down completely and then cold boot it and bring it up uh, from scratch. And then go through after you uh, log in with your username and password, then uh, do the first steps on the welcome screen, which is your time shift and possibly the installation of NVIDIA drivers if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. Add another two minutes on that if you are adding that NVIDIA driver and that also requires a restart of your computer. Once that procedure is done, let's assume that you installed an NVIDIA driver after the restart. Um, continue following the welcome screen to your update manager. That's roughly somewhere between maybe three or four minutes, depending on your internet connection. You may want to think about switching to a local mirror if you're doing that. Your choice. And then I would um, basically just make mention of the fact that it's roughly 15 minutes between it's all said and done. So it's not too bad. 15 minutes total time. Now, what you will find also on that installation media are some extra tools. Always keep your installation media handy somewhere. So Gparted is found on that installation media, so you can repartition your drive prior to your installation if required. And then also there's boot repair in case you have some issues down the road. 
I have shown videos on boot repair before. It's, it's not a complicated process, but it is necessary occasionally. Especially for people that do dual boots and something messes up your bootloader. The other thing that's found on the same installation slash live media is time shift for system restores. And I highly encourage that you activate that when you did that through your welcome screen. So you have that running in the background at all times. Usually people forget all about it. But just remember this, once you can't log into your system, time shift could be your friend. It could save your bacon down the road. Now, I'm going to give you some examples of what you'll find after you install your system on 21.3 Cinnamon. You're going to have approximately, for extensions, you're going to have approximately 26, and you'll find them in the download section. For your applets, you're going to find approximately 200. Applets are those little toys down here on your panel bar. And then desklets, you're going to have roughly about 51 of those. And those are the toys that go on your desk top. I've shown ca big old calendars before in some of my videos. If you have seen those, those are desklets. Now the panel can be adjusted either through here or right clicking. Mine is semi see-through right now. And that's done with an extension actually. That extension is called transparent panel. So you can probably see that my panel is semi see-through. But more importantly with your panel, you can increase the height from the middle to make it a little bit taller. I'm filming in 1920 by 1080. My screen is 43 inches. And more importantly, I like tall things, large icons. So when you're dealing with icons on the right zone specifically, these are normally a lot smaller. Sorry, the symbolic. That's what I meant to point out. Sorry. So you may want to crank that up and this will accommodate for whatever height you have. The uh, font size is determined by my date and time and the date and time itself. And by the way, this is normally set for allow theme to determine font size. I manually override it by just cranking it down to the largest. So over here is your time and date and you can turn off your 24 hour clock. That makes the 12 and with an AM PM indicator and then you can slide the show the date and day. Okay, so that takes care of the time. And uh, one more thing, there's a whole bunch of actions now available on 21.3. They have a lot of uh, different uh, interaction with your file managers and menus and stuff. And you can take a peek at my dedicated video on um, action items. So last item I'm going to discuss is your pan, uh, the menu itself, not the panel. I just talked about that. This box can be resized by clicking in the corner. And if you want the icons bigger, right click on the mint logo, hit configure, hit the second tab called menu and adjust these three fields to whatever you feel is necessary for your screen resolution to make those things look nice, nice and large for you. So that is the edge version in a nutshell. Now underneath the shield is where your Linux kernels are. And you can see there's several categories. The standard version uses a 515 series kernel, which is not installed as you can see here, because I'm running the edge version. The edge version installs a 6.5. Okay, so I had the initial 6.5-14 kernel installed and then it upgraded to the 15 and now that is the active running kernel. You also have the 6.2 series available to you. The 5.19s are end of life, so don't worry about those. Your standard version of Linux Mint 21.3 Cinnamon uses a 5.15 series kernel. The whole reason for the edge version is because of that, to accommodate for newer hardware. Thank you for watching.